Hello there, hard to believe it's already day five here at the Dapabet World Snooker Championship. The first round is beginning to bubble up really nicely. Just a few places left up for grabs in the last 16, which this time tomorrow will be underway with a certain Ronnie O'Sullivan against Joe Perry. Now, I've been joined throughout the first few days of the championship by various players, but today we've got a referee, so we better make sure we behave. Paul Collier. Paul, good afternoon. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us. That's all right. You're welcome, Rob. Hard to believe... It's ten years ago since you since you ref the final. We're talking about Ronnie playing uh, playing tomorrow against Joe Perry in the in the first of the last sixteen matches, and you oversaw Ronnie's final against Dot back in '04. That's right. When they told me I was doing it, it was about six months before the event, and that six months seemed to take forever. And where the last ten years have gone, I've no idea. It's uh, it's flown by. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's gone uh, it's gone very quickly. Mm. Time has dragged a little bit for the other our other referee, Brendan Moore. Now, Brendan is a local Sheffield lad, and if you see somebody bouncing around here at the Crucible, <laughs> if you are here to watch a few matches, it'll be Big Bren because this year he's making his debut on the final. He's done some other big ones in the past, but for a local lad, that's going to mean a, an awful lot to Brendan, isn't it? And, and he's waited a long time for it. Oh, he has. I mean, he's hoped for a few years that he'd get in with a shout. And then when he finally got told this was his year, I mean, he's been buzzing ever since. So, yeah, he can't wait for it. He's really looking forward. And is it as exciting being here as a ref, being out there on the floor, as, oh, as we assume it would be being here as a player? Yeah, this is the one everybody wants to do. This is what you put all the work in for and all the years you know, to get to the Crucible. I mean, I took five years out of the game. And to be honest, this was the only one I really missed. So. OK, well, I know you've done one match already and you're in action again this afternoon when Neil Robertson comes out centre stage, the world number one. Before we talk about that and a few other matches, let's wrap up some of the action from last night when Ricky Walden came through a marathon 73 minute final frame against the debutante Kyron Wilson. Great effort from Kyron to, uh, to push Ricky close. Remember, Ricky Walden was a semi-finalist here last year. Paul, I know you watched some of that last frame. From a referee's perspective, is it hard to concentrate when a frame goes that long? It can be. It's not so much about that frame. It's the fact you've already been out there for three and a half, four hours before that frame starts. Um, but it, to be honest, concentration, it's, as long as you've got it, you're OK. When you lose it, you're, you're in trouble. If you can stay with it, it's not too difficult. <laughs> OK, well, we've got our man Ivan Hershevitz, who does the late night show. I was, I was so in control of the frame. It, was, um, it would have been one of the worst frames I've ever lost, I think, if I'd lost that one. So... Um yeah, I'm pleased to scrape over the line in the end. It was a, it was a tough frame. And you showed everyone how well you can play on the, on the big stage last year by getting to the semi-final. So you obviously come back here with good memories. Yeah, brilliant memories. It's the, um, it's the best place to play well and, and probably the, the worst place to struggle out there. It's, um, it's a unique venue. And it's one, it's one I like this, the challenge of, you know, to come here and, and try and play my best stuff. So hopefully this can be uh, another good year for me. Thanks, Ricky. See you in the next round. So that was Ricky last night talking about how invaluable that experience would be ahead of his second round opponent who last night when he did that interview with Ivan he didn't know whether it was going to be Barry Hawkins or the man they call the angry farmer Dave Gilbert. It is of course Barry Hawkins. Barry well celebrating his birthday in style. I'm not sure he was thinking too much about that before the uh, before the match resumed today but uh, a good effort yesterday from uh, from Dave Gilbert but Barry secured six unanswered frames and that's uh, it's a difficult way for for Dave Gilbert's uh, campaign to come to an end but Barry drawing on the class that uh, that we know he's got now he's uh, flourishing into his 30s good good result from him oh definitely I mean I think Barry's got a lot stronger since he won his maiden ranking event in Australia um, you know he just he looks a solid player and I think that a lot of the top players now that's the difference once they get on a roll they can rattle off a lot of frames in succession so just as Barry did there well, I had a word with him afterwards. Uh, one of the questions, of course, was about the rerun of last year's semi-final against Ricky, which Barry won to make his, uh, his maiden appearance in a World Championship final. But here are his reflections after winning six on the spin and dispatching Dave Gilbert 10-4. Well, there's no finer birthday present than safely getting through to the second round here at the Crucible. Barry, first of all, many happy returns. Yeah, thanks. I can, uh, I can celebrate my birthday a little bit now, I suppose. Nice, nice little birthday present getting through, obviously. So, uh... Yeah, go out for a nice meal tonight probably and um, no drink and uh, yeah, try and relax now. 
I guess your birthday pretty much was an irrelevance this morning when mm. when you got up, knowing that uh, y you had to turn it on a little bit today with with Dave Gilbert uh, taking four frames to to only trail by one. Yeah, I was delighted to to get out of that five four yesterday because um, I felt a bit a bit ropey to be honest with the first the first four frames. Um, so I managed to come out after the interval and and, and play a bit better. So I, I was delighted, obviously, with five four, um, and I knew Dave's a great player. So um, yeah, it was important to get off to a decent start today and um, lucky for me he missed a few chances early doors but after that I um, I punished him and, and played pretty solidly after that. It's, it's amazing what a difference a day makes isn't it? Yeah crazy really. Um, I, as I say I took a bit of confidence after the way I finished off yesterday so um, I felt like I could come out and do the same thing today and I managed to do that so um, yeah, I'm delighted to get through and then still be involved in the tournament now. What was your mindset coming here to the Crucible? Because I guess to the uninitiated snooker fan, you basically burst onto the scene last year mm. when you when you swept to the final. Um, yeah, a little bit more expectation, I think. Um, but I think once you taste that one table set up and, and get through to the final, you just you're desperate to to get back there again, really. And I'm I'm definitely desperate to do well here. Um, so uh, yeah, I can just um, try and keep my mind on the job really and, and keep focused and and just see what happens. Well, it's a, a rerun of your semi-final last year in the second round. You've got Ricky Walton again. Yeah, let's hope it's a better standard this year. Uh, <laughs> hopefully I can make a break over 50 in the first 12 frames or whatever it was. So, uh, <laughs> no, um, oh, I've got a tough game. Ricky's Ricky will be hungry to get back there again. So uh, he's a great player, um, and I, I class him as a, a good friend as well, really, now. Um, Once you settled, you know, as you said, he eventually got into it, and, and you put a great performance in. From the referee's perspective, you're so physically close to the players. Can you sometimes sense where a camera wouldn't necessarily pick up when a player is feeling nervous, especially because you're on the circuit, you guys travel around so much together. Do you get an inkling that sometimes someone's just a little bit edgy and, and not quite feeling themselves? Yeah, definitely. You pick up from the body language of the players. I mean, you get to know them. You see them so many times in a season. Um, you know, when they're suffering, when they're feeling it, you, you certainly know it. It may not be obvious to the public, but I mean, you know, we know them and, and yeah, you definitely see it. Well, certain players wear their hearts on their sleeves a bit more than others. And uh, a man who's been sitting in your seat a couple of times for Snooker Live is Dominic Dale. Dominic's in action tonight. His is the last of the first round matches to get underway. He takes on Mark Davis. But yesterday, we managed to go across to the Lyceum with him. Dominic is a man of many hobbies. He collects antique watches. And believe it or not, he's a trained singer. So where better to take him in Sheffield than the Lyceum, where he gave me, of all people, a bit of a singing lesson. And I can assure you, he's far, far better than me. Well, the Crucible isn't the only theatre in this part of Sheffield. This magnificent building is called the Lyceum. They've put as many lights on as they can, so you perhaps can't see the real splendour, especially on the ceiling. This place is literally a stone's throw from the Crucible and holds just over a thousand. Dirty Dancing is on until the 3rd of May. Dominic Dale is not guesting in that, but ahead of his first round match, he's decided to give us a few singing lessons because those of you who may have uh, been to watch Dominic uh, in action at the Welsh Open may be aware that uh, he hasn't got a bad voice. So what are you going to do for us this morning? Apparently, he did say when we walked into the entrance of the Lyceum, of course, you realise if you're a proper singer, you shouldn't really start until three o'clock in the afternoon. And we are now just around about 20 to 11. So he's getting his excuses in early. But oh, no, what, no, what, no. What, are you, what are you going to walk us through or what are we going to be hearing uh, now? Well, I thought I was going to give you a little bit of a singing lesson. Now, in singing, there are, there are certain techniques like in sports, in snooker, for instance, in golf, you, you need a good singing technique and that develops a voice. It, it sort of makes the engine more powerful, sh uh, shall we say. Normally, you'd have a piano. Normally, you start with scales. You start quite low down and you increase the scales through the vocal range until basically your voice cracks. No, you, sh <laughs> you, you, sh you should never force and strain when you sing. Now, you've got a lower voice than me, Rob, so we're going to do some singing lessons, yeah? Hang on, hang on a minute. I'm singing as well. Yes, you are. Oh, no way. No way. OK. All right, then. Well, I don't know how long we're going to do this piece for, but... <clears throat> well, I'll try. You, 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 you go, you... and then I'll try and chip in if I can. OK. Well, basically, I'm going to go through a, a scale uh, or simple, a simple singing sort of exercise. I've got loads of them on my CD at home. I never use them, of course. Um, it's called Lend Me Your Aid. Now, what happens is the A is an A lower down the range. But as you increase uh, the vocal range, you go higher and higher. You have to cover the vowel sound. So the A, in this case, becomes an er. 
And as you sing higher, you point the er uh sound through the hard palate, and that's what enables you to sing a few notes higher, and you can get a good bright sound from doing that. Okay, you give us, you give an example. Then. So yeah, you try to copy me. I'll, I'll sing it a little bit low down for you, uh, initially, because you've yeah, got a low the voice. Your bass stuff baritone. Is easier for me. The yeah. high stuff is a nightmare. <clears throat> Okay, well, you should never force or strain the voice. It'll extend and stretch with, with practice and singing, basically. So here we go. Lend me your aid. Can you do that for me? Lend me your aid. That's very good. We're going to sing slightly higher now. Lend me your aid. Lend me your aid. Did I go too high there? You're starting to spread. Now, this is where you'll need to cover the vowel sound to an er, uh, because if you sing it high and keep the A as an A, what happens is you spread and you basically shout. It becomes like, like Beatles stuff, you know, pop singing. You'll end up sounding like this. Let me all right. And it's coming out of here and it's spreading. See, you can't, the voice can't go anywhere there. You need to point it through the hard palate. So the A becomes an er uh, and it becomes, let me all right. See, no because of that. Okay. And you on, can go, go up and up and up, you see. Just finish off with, uh, with a, little, um, a little verse of something. I mean, maybe what you do at the, at the Welsh Open. Do you want to do Delilah? Oh, or? I'll do, um, I'll do a little bit of Unchained Melody, shall I? Right, let me... Your love to me. I'm not quite sure how you follow that. Dominic Dale live at the Lyceum. He'll be, he'll be here depending on how he gets on against Mark Davis. You can buy tickets for about 50p. Uh, <laughs> Paul, he is such a character. You must remember Dominic from, the, uh, from his early amateur days when he was playing back in Wales. Oh, absolutely. In the mid-80s when I, mean, I started refereeing about the same year Dominic started playing. So did a lot of travelling around Wales together, playing on weekends. And he's, yeah, he's always been a character. He's not bad on those high notes either. I mean, I know singing is a, is a proud tradition in Wales and uh, Dominic looks as though he's, he's carrying that on with quite some style. Well, his own inimitable style. <laughs> yeah, he's got his own style. You're right there. OK, we've got some live matches coming up very soon. Marco Fu is resuming against Martin Gould, 6-3 up. That'll be live on the BBC at 2.30. Marco, remember, has lost to Martin twice in the, uh, in the first round here in recent years. But Marco's right back up into the world's top eight. And the other match which starts this afternoon is Neil Robertson, the world number one. Paul, you'll be overseeing that one. Robbo, of course, is up against Robbie Williams making his uh, debut. And... Um, Always nice to get the world number one uh, on, the, um, on the on the call sheet as a referee. Definitely, yeah, and, and Neil's a great player, and it, it's, it'd be good to see Robbie out there as well, see how he settles down. I've seen a lot of him this season. Um, you know, he's had some good runs in the European Tour events. I wasn't out in India when he got to the semis, but he's, uh, he's a good player, and, you know, it's, he'd get out there and uh, just try and get, a, get an early start, I think he'll need to do. And it's quite special, actually. I was just saying to you whilst we were listening to Dominic uh, warbling away in the background, it's even from my perspective uh, as an MC, it's, it's a really exciting moment when you know a debutante's coming out, not for the second session, but for the first session, and you can really sort of try and hype the crowd up. It, it's important that players who work so hard, like Robbie Williams, who's come through four qualifying rounds, I think, and a respotted black against Fergal O'Brien in the decider. So he's really earned this the hard way, and it's really nice when the crowd respond and, and you see the player coming out going, wow, I, I've arrived. Yeah, definitely. There's such a good crowd at the Crucible, they always are. And I mean, you do a fair job of winding them up as well before it starts. But yeah, they always give everybody a good welcome. Even when we walk out, you know, they're, 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 they're very warm and welcoming. And it, it'll be good for Robbie to get out there. And obviously, Neil, is, I think he wants that record of the centuries as well as, as to progress in the tournament. So he's, he's got a lot on his plate. Great stuff. Thanks very much for joining us, You're Paul. Welcome. You're out live as well with Neil Robertson, the world number one. So uh, live matches coming up at half past two. That's it for this instalment of Snooker Live. But please do join us as close to six as we can make it later on today because we'll be bringing you exclusive footage from Barry Hearn's press conference. We've heard rumours changes to potentially the qualifiers for the world championship there's that issue about the wild cards whether a certain mr davis and mr hendry will be given wild cards and we get another affirmation as to whether the world championship is staying right here in sheffield loads to talk about barry hearn will be delivering his verdicts we'll be bringing that as close to six as we can in the meantime enjoy robbo coming out on center stage at half past two that's all from paul and myself for now bye bye